Good evening, everybody. If y'all would try and get everybody from the outside in, we're going to get ready to get this started. I know everybody's excited to be here. Looks like we've got an excellent crowd tonight. Everybody's ready to see these guys graduate. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, graduation ceremony for TRFA number 146. I've been honored to serve as the director for the academy. My name is Battalion Chief Jack Crandall. I'll be your host this evening, and we'd also like to welcome our live television audience. If you wouldn't mind turning off your cell phones and pagers just so we can keep from disturbing the ceremony and everybody will be a lot happier. I'd like you to help me welcome TRFA class number 146. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Virginia Beach Fire Department Honor Guard, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem, which will be performed by Master Firefighter Israel Medina. And then we'll have the invocation by Captain John Costin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that start spangled banner yet wave? All oh, the land of the 
Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be here with us in this service tonight. We pray that you would help us to celebrate the accomplishments of these young men and women and the hard work that they've put in over the last seven months. We hope that this would be a special night for them and that your glory would shine through in those accomplishments. We pray that you would watch over all those that are here tonight, give them traveling mercies home, and be with us throughout the service and on our way to work in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. You can please, be, please be seated. That won't be the last time that happens tonight. <laughs> all right, as everybody gets settled in, I'd like to thank all of the, uh, the first and foremost, the graduates, uh, their family members, all of our distinguished guests. I'm going to name a few. Rest assured, I'm going to miss somebody. Chief Cover usually backs me up on this. Uh, as always, we've got our city manager, Jim Spores, here tonight. Uh, Councilwoman Ross Hammond is here. Council members Wood and Moss are also here tonight. Uh, these are in no particular order, so don't uh, take any offense here. Uh, EMS uh, Division Chiefs Brazel and Bianco are here tonight. Uh, the, Re uh, the Honorable Thomas Kale, our city uh, magistrate, is here. Retired Fire Chief Harry Dizel. I saw some members from Hanover, Henrico, uh, uh, Virginia Beach Police Department, uh, uh, the Fire Chief from uh, Wilmington Fire Department, North Carolina Chief Martinet is here, and we'll talk to you in a little while. And uh, so many retired members from the VBFD, it's amazing to see the number that are here tonight. It makes me, makes me proud to, to be a part of this. And I'd also just promise somebody in our live TV audience, we've got a bunch of our members that are at a meeting in Indianapolis. Nook, I know you're watching. So uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoy the ceremony from Indianapolis tonight. Appreciate your service. Okay, so the senior staff at the Virginia Beach Fire Department, most of them are seated over here, I believe. Uh, we've got our fire chief, Steve Cover is here. Deputy Chiefs Hutchison and McAndrews. Uh, Chiefs Mike Baraki and Dennis Keene weren't able to be here. They're on department business as well. And Chiefs Funiak and Ramsey and Cooper are all here tonight. Uh, thank you guys uh, for being here. It is my privilege now to introduce to you the instructional staff of the Virginia Beach Fire Academy class number 146. I'd ask these guys to come to the stage uh, to be recognized because without their hard work, dedication, and hours of preparation time, teaching, counseling, mentoring, and leading this night would not be possible by any stretch of the imagination. So I'd ask the, the staff to please come to the stage. What did I miss? They were doing this. Psst, psst. I thought I missed something, so I had to, I had to check. The people with the flags are supposed to be helping, so they're not here. Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen, the staff that train these fire, fine firefighters right here in the front. I would also like to recognize the countless field instructors that, we, that sacrificed their time to ensure that these recruits are ready for the challenges that they will face in their careers. I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Pat Gilbert and Lisa Moss, who were the ones helping me hand that stuff off here in the back. There are civilian staff who work beside, behind the scenes every day to ensure that the staff stays in line and the administrative staff gets stuff done. Especially Pat, she drives me nuts sometimes, but she always makes us look great, rest assured. So thank you guys. A few more people to thank and we'll move on. Uh, I want to recognize the staff of Resource Management, uh, Battalion Chief Humphreys, Molly Riley, Chuck Berthram, Bob Sherman, Dave Stites, uh, make sure these recruits are properly equipped and uniformed and they did a great job at it. Thank you very much. And without our human resources staff, none of these guys would be down here. Uh, our recruiters and, and the HR folks, Susan Salafranca, Christia Webb, Lori Skidda, and Donna Eilett. Guys do a great job getting these guys through the process. And uh, from the looks of this group that we've got down here graduating tonight, one of the best I've seen. So thank you very much for that too. <clears throat> Uh, last but not least, our multimedia division. These are the guys that are putting together everything tonight, all the, uh, uh, the show and everything that we're doing, this teleprompter that I'm looking in that I'm not really digging all that much. But um, uh, I'd like to thank Kurt Keller Hall as the supervisor of the shop, of course, Bob Anderson, John Austin, and Ray Smith. They spent countless hours documenting what we do every day as a department and documenting what these recruits did during their recruit school. And you'll see the results of that later in a short video. I'm going to share a little bit about our video shop. Um, they, uh, we, we like to, that's what we like to call them as our video shop. They produce a video called Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. It's a television training program that we put out every month. It's been produced since about 1990 uh, when Bob Anderson started the show back then. Every so often we get celebrities that'll come in and introduce the show. And uh, you know, some big time celebrities, as you'll see here in a minute, it was originally called VBFD Frontline Firefighter, which was kind of a tongue twister. Uh, so a lot of the celebrities had difficulty with it, so they changed the name to simply Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Um, I've got a short collection of some of the very well-known celebrities who have contributed to the program, and I'd like you to watch tonight and realize some of the efforts and some of the good work that our multimedia shop does. Please enjoy. Hi, strange as it may seem, I'm Tim Conway, and I'd like to welcome you to this month's, week's edition, day's edition, whatever, of VFBFDF, BF, <laughs> VA, to the thing you're going to see. Hi, this is Tom Poston. Hi, this is John Delancey. Hi, I'm Elvis Presley. Hi, this is Governor George Allen. Hi, I'm Vanna White. Hi, everybody, I'm Paula Zahn. Hi, I'm Pat Sajak from Wheel of Fortune. Hello, I'm Tom Barton of Beach Ford, and welcome to this edition of VBFD Frontline. Hi, I used to be Alan King, and welcome to the Virginia Beach Fire Department Frontline. Now, I want you guys and gals to pay attention to what's coming, because a lot of people depend on you. There was a huge celebration this past weekend in the city of Chesapeake. More than five, excuse me, sir. Oh, yes. I can't seem to find my studio. Your studio? Yes, sir. Oh, well, you're in a studio, but the wrong one, obviously. Mm -hmm. What you want yeah, is the Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter right. Studio. Right. And it's right down the hall. You can't miss it, okay? Yeah, thanks a lot, sir. Rookie. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Ed Hughes from WTKR News Channel 3, and welcome to this edition of Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. My name is Joe Hoffel. I do the morning show on WCMS, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this month's edition of the Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Hi, I'm Billy Reynolds with the Virginia Beach Fire Department Combat Challenge Team, reporting to you live from Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome to this month's edition of the Virginia, Virginia Beach, Beach Frontline Firefighter. Hi, I'm uh, Don Imus. Welcome to this edition of the Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Pay attention. Hi, I'm Congressman Owen Pickett. 
Welcome to this month's edition of Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Hi, I'm Sandra Parker of 13 News. Welcome to this month's edition of Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Hi, I'm Jeff Foxworthy. I'd like to welcome you to this month's edition of the Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Hi, I'm Rudy Bosch. Welcome to this edition of the Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Hi, I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to this edition of Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. Just Mitchell Riley, okay? And here we go, and action. Hi, I'm Mitchell Riley, and you're watching the Virginia Beach Frontline Firefighter. I guess you knew there'd be a punchline, but in case you didn't know, that last uh, famous celebrity is sitting in the front row as one of our recruits tonight, Mitch Riley. So, uh... <laughs> and Riley, that wasn't my idea. It just came out of nowhere. So, <laughs> well, that was. Good. I just have a few remarks for you guys that I'll that I'll uh, uh, offer you before we move on. Um, you know, graduation from the academy is a very proud moment, uh, not only for you guys, the staff, and, uh, and your families. Uh, we've watched each of these individuals develop into fine firefighters over the last seven months, and I say that with all honesty. Um, the anticipation has come to fruition. You wouldn't think that on February 2nd you'd be sitting here tonight, um, you know, going through this, you know, and being so proud of it. But I want to personally congratulate each of you guys sitting down there for all of your accomplishments. Uh, we told you in the beginning that it wasn't going to be easy. And I think each one of you would tell us tonight that we were absolutely right. Um, rest assured that your efforts have paid off. Welcome to the best job on the planet. I want to thank your families because without them, you wouldn't be here. Um, you know, they, you've endured a lot of pain through the academy, but you can bet that they have too. Um, you know, you probably came home complaining every night that you were sore and, you know, you had, you know, had a hard day. Well, I, I can tell the families that they weren't kidding you. They did have some hard days and, uh, and uh, I thank you for that. Uh, I, I, we truly appreciate it. But just rest assured uh, that each one of you has joined another family in the Virginia Beach Fire Department. And I can't say that there is nothing further from the, nothing more truthful than that you have joined another family for sure. Um, from the first day of the academy, recruits begin to get nicknames. This is where I add a little humor to this. Um, I'm gonna, just going to share a few nicknames. I'm not going to tell you who they are. Maybe you can guess. Maybe you can't. All right, so some of the nicknames, and I'm telling you, these start from day one. Somebody does something dumb, and we give them a nickname. So, uh, so th these are the ones we got. We got Honest Abe. We got K-Swag. We got Tooth Fairy. We got DDS. We got 757. Anybody want to guess who that is? Don't be near him when the bell rings. Uh, Hasselhoff. Ted Fred, I don't even know who some of these are. Uh, Water Bear, Jelly, and I know that came out of a donut. I don't know how that went down, but uh, Blue Steel, DJ Seaface, we know who that is. Pugga, I don't want to even touch that one. Youngster, McLovin, <laughs> Peanut Butter, Whamsy, Sugar, Smitty, Burger, Mr. Ifsta, and, and Diff. And Cassis, our class president, was given a nickname, but I am not permitted to share it. All right? But it was lovingly given, rest assured. All right, I've, I've been done a little bit of reading lately, and I've got a few tidbits I want to share with you. It's just a few bullets uh, that may help you through your career. Um, I hope that uh, they prepare you at least, at least a little bit for being the rookie. All right? Number one, never be afraid to fail. Gray hairs on the season guy are a badge of honor. Don't mistake them for age. Watch and learn. Know how to do something is knowledge. Knowing why you do something is wisdom. You only need one fire department sticker on your car. <laughs> learn to cook at least two great meals. It will make your life much easier. If you don't maintain a healthy fear of this job, you're destined to get hurt. Show up for work early. There's no greater gift you can give the guy that you're relieving. Always eat dinner with your crew. The best conversations always happen at the dinner table. Every firefighter in this room will tell you that. Never take a seat at the dinner table that faces the TV. Your firehouse likely has seating assignments and that one ain't yours. 
Answer the phone and the doorbell. They are always for you. <laughs> if you don't have a clue what you're doing, say so. Don't tell war stories to non-firefighters. They probably not going to think it's exciting as you do. Enjoy your time in the jump seat. It will be the most fun you have in your career. I promise. <laughs> have pride in your department, in your station, in your rig. And when the chief comes by the station, take pride in his car. <laughs> Beware of those who don't think they need to train. Take a lot of pictures. You will appreciate it 25 years from now. Offer to help before you're asked. Introduce yourself. Don't be offended when you're not remembered because you're not memorable yet. He who knows how to do a job will always have a job. He who knows why they do a job will eventually be the other man's boss. If you find yourself wondering where your captain is, you can bet he's wondering where the heck you are. Drink coffee. Don't clean the cast iron skillet with soap and water. If you're not sick, don't use sick leave. You just might need it in the future. Follow directions. If you have to tell somebody you're the king, you're probably not the king, unless it's the BTU king. We know who that is. There's no such thing as a safe scene. Except that this is a dangerous job. You will have to put the safety of our citizens above your own at times. Lastly, and this is a little bit tongue in cheek, in the words of one of our illustrious battalion chiefs, there are two types of employees in this department, assets and liabilities. Which one are you? My personal message to each of you is to be a student of this job. Learn something every day. Study, go to school, get your degree. You will take calculated risks in this business based on analysis. We're professionals. You're now a member of the fi finest profession in the world. You will ascend to personal highs that only another firefighter will understand, and you'll be brought to tears that only you will understand. I just hope and pray that you're able to operate within those two extremes. Good luck. It's my honor and privilege to serve with each of you. At this time, At this time, I'd like to introduce the fire chief of our department, Chief Cover. Uh, read a little bit about him. He's a lifelong resident of the city of Virginia Beach. He's our fourth fire chief and the first who has held each rank in the Virginia Beach Fire Department. He became a member of the Virginia Beach Volunteer Fire Department at the age of 16, operating out of Oceana Station Number 8. He was hired by the fire department on June 1st, 1980. As a career firefighter, he held assignments as a firefighter at several stations prior, prior to being promoted to captain in 1990. As a chief officer, he's overseen all special operations programs, Battalion 3A, Division 3A, and served as a deputy chief of operations. He has a master's degree in public administration from Troy State, and he's completed the executive fire officer program at the National Fire Academy and the National Fire Service and Command Corps from the University of Maryland. Fire and Rescue Institute. He has also earned the Chief Fire Officer designation from the Commission on Professional Credentialing. Chief Cobra currently serves as the sponsoring agency chief for Virginia Task Force Two, our FEMA team, and he's an active member in the emergency services community at many levels and is a member of many fire service organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Fire Chief, Steve Cobra. Thank you, Jack. Just to, uh, as Jack said, I was going to cover him. So, Chief Crandall, here we go. Councilman uh, Brad Martin, thank you for being here this evening. I know we've got uh, Thomas Cahill, our magistrate, in the in the audience this evening. He's going to swear these these new firefighters in for us. So, we appreciate you being here. Aaron Sutton, our Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator, is here this evening. Thank you, Aaron, for being here. And also uh, Jenny and Lou Ann from from our office. They, uh, they certainly help keep us on track every day uh, at Fire Administration. I, I also want to thank uh, 
everybody that, that is here tonight. This is a wonderful crowd here in a great venue uh, that is going to, I'm, I'm sure it's going to make it a memorable night for these young men and women that are uh, going to be sworn in as firefighters this evening. So thank you all for being here. Certainly uh, the family and friends, as Chief Crandall said, it, it uh, certainly is a commitment on your part and we appreciate uh, all you do uh, in sharing your loved ones with us to make our organization the great organization that it is. So uh, certainly family uh, is, is a huge support to us. And as Chief Crandall also said, he stole about half of my notes, I think, this evening. But um, we, we are a family here, and uh, we, we hope that you understand that uh, they're embarking on a, on a new family. They're going to cultivate relationships that they'll have for the rest of their lives that, uh, that they will share and lean on one another uh, in the future. <clears throat> Our training staff, I, I too want to thank, thank them, Chief Crandall and the entire training staff. The, uh, they really do pour their heart and soul into making our program great. And uh, we, we start out uh, with our hiring process. Uh, with, with, we started out with approximately 1,400 applicants for this class. And uh, we're down to 23 uh, graduating here this evening. So that uh, tells you a little bit about the, uh, the uh, difficulty in, in getting through our process. And it's not easy for a reason, and that's because we uh, truly do want to make the best firefighters uh, to deliver the best service possible to, uh, to our citizenry. So our training staff, I appreciate it. And as I told the recruits earlier, I still fondly remember uh, the, the folks that taught me, uh, certainly in recruit class. So to the recruits, just real quick, um, congratulations to each and every one of you for getting here. Uh, you began February 1st of this year. 28 of you started uh, this program, and I told you on day one that uh, typically not everybody makes it through, and unfortunately that proved out uh, in, in this class as well. And that's what uh, recruit school is for, is to make sure that, that we have the best of the best. You've worked hard, you've stretched yourselves, and transformed into a well-trained group of energetic young firefighters. Our hope is for you to continue to grow and lead our department into the future. We pride ourselves, as I've said before, on hiring the best and the brightest. You're highly motivated people. Uh, you, you're, you're second to none. But be careful not to get too full of yourself because there's 486 people that came before you that uh, are pretty proud to be here as well. <clears throat> Just a couple nuggets for you to think about. To become our leaders of tomorrow, I encourage you to be excellent followers today. I want to quickly just, just go over a couple quick nuggets for you to, to think about. Be the absolute best you can be when responding to emergency calls. Know the details of your job. Know what your company officer and senior firefighters expect. And know the person you are there to assist is having a very bad day. Continue to train so you can become the best in the world at providing fire, EMS, and emergency services to our citizens. Embrace firefighter safety and wellness. You will not benefit your team or our citizens if you are not physically fit and safe enough in carrying out your duties. Take care of yourself and your teammates. Be compassionate towards each other and our public that we serve. You will be sharing both good times and bad with your shift mates. Be there for each other and our citizens. And again, remember, people only call us when they're having a bad day. Be responsible and, and be mindful of our resources. Our city leadership provides us with some of the best equipment, apparatus, fire stations in the world. Certainly, our people is what makes all of that work, and you are part of that now. So be very careful with our resources. Know every firefighter and officer in the Virginia Beach Fire Department is behind you. If you ever need help, just ask. Enjoy your job as you go forward. Keep learning and strive to deliver the best emergency services possible. And always remember, be your best when it matters the most. Thank you.
Thank you, Chief. I'd like to introduce uh, Councilman, Councilmember Jim Wood. Uh, he's serving his third consecutive term on City Council. He's a 1981 graduate of Princess Anne High School. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree with special attainments in commerce from Washington Lee University in 1985. He served as a Virginia Beach police officer from 1985 to 1988. He currently is vice president of JD and W Incorporated, a commercial general contracting firm which specializes in renovations, new construction, and design build work. He's a past chairman of the Transportation District uh, Commission of Hampton Roads and has served as a commissioner since 2003. His council liaison responsibilities include the Audit Committee, Hampton Road Transit, the Volunteer Council, the Town Center Project, and the Health Services Advisory Board. He's a Rotarian since 1995. He is a past president of both the Rotary Club of Cape Henry and the Tidewater Chapter of the Washington Lee Alumni Association. He has served on the boards of the Virginia Beach Public Schools Education Foundation and the Hampton Roads Planning District Commission, YMCA, Camp Silver Beach, and the Little Neck Women Racquet Club. He has coached youth soccer and basketball, chaired a Cub Scout pack, and led the Tidewater YMCA Indian Guides Program. Please help me welcome Council Member Jim Wood. Well, before I start, I also wanted to <clears throat> back up Chief Candle and, and uh, Chief Crandall and Chief Cover. We've got our Sheriff uh, Ken Stolle who snuck in the back. I saw him as well, so welcome Sheriff Stolle. Well, good evening. It's a pleasure for me to join you to celebrate the graduation of our newest firefighters. Today's fire service is vastly different than the days of bucket brigades, hand pumpers, and fire hoses. Today, we have high-tech equipment and better prevention methods. Still, it takes hard work, it takes determination, it takes teamwork, and it takes skill. We all saw these elements come together so beautifully two years ago as members of the fire department and other agencies so courageously responded to the F-18 crash. The actions of those who responded kept a bad accident from becoming a horrible catastrophe. Our fire department staff members are second to none, and now you have the honor of joining some of the best trained, most highly skilled and dedicated firefighters in the world. I applaud the 23 graduates of TRFA class number 146 who have worked so hard to master the skills necessary to join the ranks of the Virginia Beach Fire Department. As firefighters, you will be working in tandem with our emergency medical services personnel, as well as our 911 dispatchers and our police officers. Together, you make up one of the finest public safety teams in the world. From assisting with disasters hundreds of miles away to working with other teams in the Hampton Roads region to responding here at home, our award-winning fire department is always ready to answer the call. Now, let me take a moment to recognize those who also serve, your families. Their support and their willingness to sacrifice make it much easier for you to do your job. Your families deserve a sincere thanks and appreciation for their behind the scenes support. So let's pause for a second and give them all a round of applause right now. Now I know I speak on behalf of all the citizens of Virginia Beach and saying thank you for your commitment to our city. You are the best and you are part of what makes Virginia Beach the greatest city in the world. I'm grateful to you for your dedication and wish you all the best. Congratulations. I'd like to introduce uh, CV Buddy Martinet. He is the chief of the Wilmington Fire Department in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Prior to this position, he served three years as an assistant county administrator in Hanover County, Virginia, and six years as the chief of the Lynchburg, Virginia Fire and EMS Department. Chief Martinez started his career at the age of 19, right here in the Virginia Beach Fire Department, where he spent 25 years. He has a bachelor's degree in fire administration from Hampton University and a master's in public administration from Troy State. In addition, he's a graduation of the graduate of the National Fire Academy Executive Fire Officer Program, where he received the Outstanding Research Award in Leadership. 
Chief Martinet also has received the designation of Chief Fire Officer by the Commission on Fire Chief, Fire Chief Officer designation. Chief Martinet le lectures nationwide on organizational leadership and specialized rescues, uh, specialized rescue operations to public safety, military, industrial, law enforcement organizations. Chief Martinet is an author of numerous articles and also the first and second editions of the book named Trench Rescue. Please help me welcome Buddy Martinet, Fire Chief of Wilmington. Thank you and good evening. Chief Cover, distinguished guests, VBFD recruits, it's an honor to speak to you this evening and represent the men and women of the Wilmington Fire Department. Before I address the recruits, I'd like to thank the families of these fine young people as they begin a wonderful journey into one of the, what I can say, truly best jobs in the world. I can tell you that going into my 41st year in this job, I have never once opened my eyes in the morning and wasn't excited about going to work. These recruits are now blessed to have one of those jobs, and you're very fortunate for that. For those of you that don't know me, I started here a very long time ago. Actually, when I was 15, not 19. I started here in something that was called a junior firefighter program. While I stayed here much of my career, it was actually away from here that I charted my path into fire service leadership. And while I am proud of all the departments that I have been associated with, I remain very proud that I am from the Virginia Beach Fire Department. I'm proud to be here for a number of reasons, but first and foremost because, in part, I owe my life to a building here called Thalia a building that served as a home, away from home, for a young man that hadn't yet figured out the difference between right and wrong. Because chief officers like Dizel, Carter, Brim, Simmons, and many others that have come a long time before you took a chance on me. Because of friends like Chief Cover, who have not let distance and inconvenience come between us and therefore, we still maintain a lifelong friendship. I'm proud to be associated with this fire department and the people in this fire department that make it one of the most respected in the nation. So why do you suppose they ask guys like Chief Cover and me to speak on occasions like this? When I was reflecting on what to say here, it occurred to me that not long ago, your chief and I were crawling down hot hallways together. That's right. It simply wasn't that long ago that we put on boots instead of dress shoes. The point is that it just wasn't that long ago. Now, unlike those of you who are staring at the sunrise of your careers, it is Chief Cover and I that are reflecting on the sunset of ours. I was speaking with one of your retirees not long ago. He was telling me about the recruit breakfast, and I'm sure it is fascinating for the recruits to hear all these stories and reflect on the wisdom of these folks. They've been in this place that you have not yet experienced. And so it is during these types of events, it is customary for some old firefighter to provide you words of wisdom. Tenured fire service professionals as well as your parents, your grandparents, and others that have valuable things to say. You will be well served to listen because what we have going for us is an acute awareness that, not, that the longer we live, the more and more we realize how little we actually know. That is the definition of wisdom. For my part in this process, I am challenged to provide you a message that will stay with you while you're on your journey in this profession. In doing so, I'm mindful that you have been in class for a number of months, and many of you want nothing more than to get your badge, shake Chief Cover's hands, and then get on to the celebration with your families. Before we get to the celebration part of this process, 
I will offer you some advice. Your chief will speak to you regarding, or chief has spoke to you regarding your department's values and his five tenets. Our only hope is that you will listen because it is this advice it's given out of long nights of reflection and in some cases regrets for situations long since past but never forgotten. I hope it becomes clear that we offer this counsel to you because we respect you, we care about you, and we want the best for you and your career. So I reflected on what to say this evening. And it occurs to me, as I said before, that we're on two very different ends of our journey. Your awakening to the sunrise of your experiences in the fire service, and I, on the other hand, find myself watching the sunset of a wonderful career. This job is and always will be the very best job in the world. I hope someone told you on the first day that you should cherish each day that you are in recruit class because these are the days that you will think back on many years from now. Someday when you're chief, you will remember the special times and the special people. I know this because in 1978 I graduated from recruit class number 13. There were 13 firefighters in that class and I can name every single one of them today. Some of them have moved on, but many of them remain great friends even as distance and time have separated us. Much of my charge to you this evening will not be a surprise as many of the ingredients that make up a great and fulfilling career never change. These things are to remain a lifelong learner so that you are on the cutting edge of your, our profession, to stay steadfast in your discipline, to eat healthy, and to stay physically and mentally fit, to live your department's values so in the absence of policy and guidelines, you will always do the right thing. Above all, remember that this profession is first about helping others and not first about helping yourself. Besides that, there are a few things that experience can help with. And that's what Chief Cover and I want you to take away from this evening. These are some of the things we want you to remember. So let's get started. A few months ago, my senior staff at the Wilmington Fire Department gathered on an annual retreat. A few days prior to that, I watched an NFL Films documentary on Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis was a 16-year veteran of the NFL's Baltimore Ravens and widely considered to be the best linebacker to ever play the game of football. When the film was over, it struck me how many trials and tribulations this man had faced in his personal and professional life. At the end of each one of these life lessons, the one thing that remained a constant in his life was that his family always stood by him. They never left his side. The point here is that you are entering in a profession where the lines between your fire service family and your real one can become blurry and difficult to navigate. You will become very close to your fire department family members, and why wouldn't you? In many cases, you will spend more time with them than you do your regular family. Just remember that there will be ups and downs in both your personal and your professional life. Just like Ray Lewis found out, when the dust settles on everything, it will be your real family that is standing by your side. Make no, no mistake about this. This job can consume you to the degree that you neglect your real life. You need to remember that they are the most important. What I'm telling you is that nothing is more important than your real family. To this, I tell you that your real family should always come first. I will also take more than just you to make a great team. Regardless of how important you think you are or the rank you might end up making or holding in this department, it will not be solely because of your efforts that you achieve anything. You see, no football wide receiver ever caught a pass that wasn't thrown by a quarterback. And no running back ever ran for yards without the ball being handed to him. 
At this point in my career, I can tell you with the utmost certainty that along your journey in this profession, many people will influence your life. Some of them will be the folks that showed you great leadership and perhaps even at times appear to push you beyond your limits. These people I speak about will be a part of your team and it will only be because of them and their efforts that you will achieve individual greatness. Cherish these people and learn that they make up and they will make up only, they will only be in your life for brief moments of time. So what I tell you about these people is to remember, it's not about you, it will always be about your team. I remember when my wife Sarah and I had our first child, Brittany. It seemed we couldn't wait for the next phase of her life. We would both say things like, I can't wait until she's out of, on regular formula, holding the bottle on her own, out of diapers, walking instead of crawling. The point is we were young and we were caught up in wishing we were always in the next phase, no matter what phase it was. Instead of enjoying and relishing the moment, we eagerly anticipated the next one. As a firefighter, you will have many firsts in your career. These firsts will come in the form of your first station, your first supervisor, your first shift, your first command office, even your first chief. All of these opportunities will provide you spe are special and will provide you an opportunity to learn. From some of these people, you will learn what the right thing to do is. From others, you will learn what the wrong thing to do is. Just remember that regardless of the positive or negative circumstances surrounding these opportunities, they are providing you an opportunity to learn. Resist the temptation to wish for the next person or the next situation, because at the end of the day, it will not necessarily be better. It will just be different. Remember, the next situation will not necessarily be better. As a public servant, you will learn to appreciate servant leadership. In the performance of your job, you will be serving others, and it is through this service that we are judged. What I want you to know is that serving in your job is not what defines you as a servant leader. After all, you're being paid to serve this community as a firefighter. What may separate you from someone else is the desire to serve outside of what you're being paid for. It is the servant leadership you provide in helping to build a better community or the servant leadership you provide to demonstrate by help other, helping others who are less fortunate reach their highest potential. It is about what you do for others that you will be judged during your journey in this profession. Famous author and psychologist Molly Marsh said, the utmost form of respect is to give sincerely of your presence. What she means is that you will need to be there Touch someone with your presence. Make yourself available to help others. And then in return, expect nothing. Begin right now. Your work life will be structured around actions that will in some form or manner positively impact the citizens in, or impact the citizens in a positive way. The decision is what will you do with the remaining time? How will you act at the station and not on calls? How will you conduct your personal life away from work? To this I say resist the temptation to look after yourself and instead focus on how you can help others. Not just your customers, but your coworkers, your department leaders. Don't worry about anybody getting ahead of you and instead focus on helping them to do just that. I promise you, you will be rewarded in ways you could never imagine. Look for ways to add value and become a servant leader in your department and your community. Demonstrate and practice servant leadership. There will also be many times in your career when you will question your own abilities. We know this. Maybe an incident that shakes your confidence or causes you to question whether you have the strength 
or mental toughness to accomplish your goals. There will be some very long and hot hallways you will need to make. There will be judgment calls concerning life and death situations, and yes, your decisions may be what determine if someone lives or dies. There will be times when despite your best efforts, you will stand over another human being and watch them take their last breath. The result of these situations is you will question if you did enough. Perhaps if you have done something different, there would have been a different outcome. To this I say you need to believe in yourself and you need to trust in your training. It should never be a question of whether or not you have adequately trained to accomplish your objective. To this I tell you, train hard and then trust your training. With regards to who you, with regard to who you are, don't let anyone try to convince you that you should act like or be someone else. Recognize your own strengths and then leverage those strengths to produce great work. As a member of a team, you will be with groups of people that will all have varying degrees of abilities. Each person is equally important regardless of their personal strengths. The only expectation that leadership, this leadership in this department has for you is that you bring your special talent to the team each and every day that you work. In doing so, each person is respected not for how much talent they have when compared to each other, but rather how much talent of their individual special talent they bring to the team. Respect yourself for your talents. As a profession, we are generally slow to change. I know this because in every fire department there is a guy that still feeds the horses just in case this whole motorized apparatus thing doesn't work out. <laughs> the problem is that slow to change these days doesn't stand up to public scrutiny just because we're firefighters. Right now and in the future, Success in our profession will be the result of constant re-examination of current practice and a deliberate commitment to continuous improvement. This means a lifelong commitment to increasing your knowledge of our profession and the skills required to provide the services to the citizens we serve. Future leaders in our profession will need to be open to doing things new and different ways. This means a continued commitment to reinvent what it is we do and how we do it. Every single day you should strive to achieve personal and professional excellence by asking yourself, how can we do it safer? How can we do it more effective? How can we be better at providing this service? This should include a personal commitment on your behalf to maintain your physical and mental fitness to do our job. Today is the day that you want to be on the cutting edge while you are working and then healthy and active when the day comes that you are going to retire. What I tell you right now is commit to being the best. Don't accept anything less. As a firefighter, our natural tendency is to focus on things that are broken. You want to know where the fixers are, all you need to do is walk up to the kitchen table in any firehouse in America. There, you will find fixers gathered for the sole purpose of pointing out to anyone that will listen what is broken. It is one of the things that I love about this profession. It makes Chief Covers and my job easy. Over the course of your career, you will have the opportunity to participate in these conversations about what things need to be fixed. What will separate you from others will not be that you recognize what needs to be fixed but rather that you participate in actually fixing it. Yoda in the movie Empire Strikes Back sums this up with the quote, do or do not, there is no try. True leaders in our business recognize a problem and then go the extra step to implement a solution. So what I ask you tonight is be a fixer. Don't just be a talker. You will also face adversity in your life, self-inflicted or not, it will be how you handle this adversity that will end up 
being what defines your character. Early in my career, I was passed over for promotion. As tough as that was to take, it was in the weeks, months, and years that followed that I realized that Chief Dizel had made the right decision. You see, he recognized something that I didn't recognize in myself, and that was that I wasn't performing up to my ability. While I was a good firefighter, there was more to being a chief officer than being a good firefighter. A good chief officer demonstrates a commitment to the organization by achieving a formal degree, by working in and gaining experience in other areas of the department outside of just fire suppression, and by participating in committees that make decisions about the future of the organization. The point is that when these things happen, you should allow yourself time for reflection on what caused it and then put in place a plan and processes so you can avoid it in the future. In the end, you will need to accept responsibility for yourself, your actions, your missteps. Perhaps some of the most powerful advice I ever received was from a retired district chief in this fire department named Melvin Mathias. He told me, you will be released from the lesson when you learn it. Whatever you do, please don't be foolish enough to think that if you repeat your missteps, you will somehow get different results. So what I tell you at this very early part of your career is embrace adversity as a new learning opportunity. With regards to trans uh, transgressions against you, you will need to be able to put the past behind you and look forward. This is only done by offering forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Forgive others for what they have done to you and will do to you, what they'll say about you. Just like a real family, your brothers and sisters in your firefighting family will not always demonstrate respect for you or others. Having been someone that has experienced the loss of a member of a fire department family, I can tell you that disagreement between us is not worthy of you carrying around with you. The sad reality of our lives in this business is that it's dangerous and none of us is guaranteed tomorrow. What I tell you when you leave here tonight is have a forgiving heart. It is natural for us to reflect on regrets as we end our careers. I think it is natural for those of us that are towards the end of our careers to think about what our legacy and our mark will be when we leave this profession. I also think that it is unfortunate that many of us wait until we are at this place to start reflecting on what our legacies will be. What I will tell you this evening is that the time to consider your legacy is not the sunset of your career, but rather the sunrise. Now is when you need to decide that you will be a leader who will positively impact people's lives. And therefore, when leaving this profession, be remembered for how you charted a course for other young people just like you to follow. To achieve this result, you need to live your life as an example for others to follow. When someone refers to you, you want them to say that you are a committed and great firefighter, that your commitment is reflected in the things that you do to maintain your skills, your physical ability, your overall health, and your wellness. You want them to say that you are a person that walks the talk when it comes to leading by example. There will be many firsts as you leave here tonight. Your first shift, first call, first apparatus, your first supervisor, your first fire, yep, even your first cleaning assignment which will be a toilet, by the way. <laughs> you will also remember your first fatality, your first disfigured human body, and the first life you will save. Many of these experiences will be things that some would believe better off not remembered. They are, however, experiences that teach us the imp how important our lives are 
and just how fragile and short our lives can be. The point is there will be many firsts, all of them jammed full of meaningful experiences and lessons. Among all these firsts, there will be far fewer opportunities for second chances should you chart the wrong course. Make sure you have put forth your best effort the first time around. I'm asking you to make your life's work your legacy. Each of you has been given an envelope this evening. Inside that envelope is a laminated card that I would like for you to tape on the inside of your locker when you get to work. I would like for you to take the contents of this envelope. I want it to be the first thing that you see each day when you arrive at work. I would like for you to be reminded that you are to conduct yourself according to your department's values, which are honesty, integrity, caring, and trust. I want you to see Chief Cover's five tenets, which are to provide excellent service, train hard to provide excellent service, pay attention to your wellness and fitness, don't throw each other under the bus, and be physically responsible. This card also includes my advice. This evening, which is to always place your family first. Remember, you are a part of a team and you will only achieve greatness because you are a part of that team. Display pride and have passion for your work. Prepare and participate in life as a servant leader. Lead by example, believe in yourself, fight for who you are, seek constant improvement, see things through to completion. How you manage adversity will be, defined, will be what defines your character. And finally, be able to put the past behind you and look forward by offering forgiveness. Finally, my ultimate charge to you this evening is that now is the time to consider your legacy. Each and every day will be a day when you need to ask yourself, what does my life mean to others and how are my actions adding to that legacy? I will leave when you, in fact, leave this place. Because what I have learned and what I have shared with you in the sunset of my career is that the totality of your efforts will be your legacy. Start now. You owe it to our profession, your brothers and sisters in this profession, to start now. I congratulate each of you this evening because it is in times like these that I am most proud to be a chief. My prayers for you are that you don't wait till the end of your career to realize what a special job this is and how fortunate you are to be able to work with such special people. Chief Cover, thank you for this privilege to speak to these recruits because I consider it to be an honor of the highest order. Recruits, God bless each of you, and good luck with your careers and your legacy. Thank you. Hey, Chief Martinette, that guy you talked about we're keeping around to feed the horses, yeah, we let him retire finally. He's, he's down here in front, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put me up to that, Ricky. <laughs> okay, now I'd like, to, like for you to be our guest and enjoy watching a video of highlights from the Recruits Academy. Um, once that's finished, uh, I'm going to turn the program over to Captain Arizari, who's going to uh, finish up with the pennant ceremony. So we're almost there, you guys. Hang in. There's some good, uh, good shots from your academy. Uh, please take a look.
For many of you, this is the most challenging accomplishment of your lives, graduating from the fire academy. Don't stop now. You're no longer recruit firefighters. You are probationary firefighters. You entered this academy as individuals. You came together through teamwork into a brotherhood. As you leave this academy, you are once again an individual until you get to your assignment. But carry the tools with you for commitment, respect, and teamwork to prepare to join your new assignment. Challenge yourself every day to be the best that you can be. Good evening, everybody. Chief, I thought you told me they were going to get a normal sized podium. This one's a little tall still. <laughs> still stork, I guess. I'm Captain Ray Arizari, and welcome to the graduation of Tidewater Regional Fire Academy 146. I once heard Chief uh, Scott from the Chief of the Suffolk Fire Department talk about the three B's when he's speaking at ceremonies or public engagements, and he said this Be bright, be brief, and then be gone. <laughs> You're probably getting two out of three tonight, so good luck with that. I have been fortunate enough, though, and blessed, truly, to be one of the core supervisors for TRFA 146. The past core supervisors have set a high standard for the academy. And we, the instructional staff, strive every day to make sure that the standard is not only met, but it's exceeded at every opportunity. Therefore, that's some of the PT stuff that you get a little bit. We like for you to process oxygen better, 146. So. As I go along, I'll speak certainly to the crew, but I, or the crowd, but I want to talk to you guys too as we get a little bit further into there. On the first day of the academy, TRFA 146 was given two expectations. Two, in addition to all our core values and our tenets. Commitment and respect. This is in addition to our values of caring, honesty, integrity, and trust. Commitment is to train hard and to do your best. Leave nothing in the tank. At the end of the day, work as if your life depends on it. One day it just might. You must be able to do the hardest 1% of this job 100% of the time. Don't ever forget it. Respect. Respect this job because firefighting is a noble and very old profession. Right? It has come before you, and it deserves it. Respect this department because it also deserves your respect. You saw something in us. We saw something in you. All right? Do your best to help your teammate, to care enough about them and their family to make sure that they go home at the end of the shift and they will do the same for you. Without respect and commitment to do what is necessary, there is no caring, no integrity, no honesty or trust. If you don't respect, you can't care. Follow me, you're tracking now, right? If you don't care, then you can't be expected to be committed and so on. If these core values are not given the attention they deserve, mistakes are made. Firefighters can be hurt, and this bleeds into everything we do, every aspect of our job. Never forget that, please. There are hard standards to meet, and if they are not met, then, we'll help, then we will help you as a student to meet those standards, because we are committed to your success. If you can't master the skills taught, as Chief Cover said on day one, then we are committed to your removal. And it's, it says that because 28 started, 23 finished. This statement to the new members of each class, this recruit cl academy, excuse me, has met the challenges of group dynamics, getting to know one another that first day, who are you gonna be with, how are these people like, right, academics, EMT, emergency medical technician for basic and enhanced, certainly firefighter one and two, hazmat, water rescue, as you saw in the video, and just for the crowd, to be underwater in an SCBA that's not designed to be underwater is a little bit disconcerting. So it feels like your mask is going to fill up with water if, if that gives you some sense of what that exercise is like. The PT, the physical fitness testing, 
certainly, and some of the workouts. I know you guys remember them, The Liberator, Sea Wolf, Marvel Comics, and any other nonsense names that we could come up with just to make it interesting, right? The hands-on practical evolutions, Shift Day, the Family Day, right? The Town Center Stair Climb, did you enjoy that? I hope, right? 44 stairs. I know some of you lost a little bit of weakness on, uh, between the laps, that was very nice, right? I don't think those bushes have grown back yet from where you were, by the way. So from EMT Enhanced Medical Training, Beach Combat PT, and also, Chief, you'd, like, you'd be interested to know that we did get a chance to PT with our police department brothers and sisters. We only got asked once, we never got asked back, I don't understand that. <laughs> SCBA week, Fire Streams week, the live fire training as I mentioned, shift day, 24 hours, or three work days pushed together, 24 hours of station life, right? The, this academy ran 36 calls for service, right? Seven structured fires, two brush fires, and one large car fire that we, we finally named the Beirut car fire. That is just about anything with wheels back there, Chief of Burns, and it's a good time, All right? Successful training experience, I would say. Over 1,000 hours of training per person from the start to the finish to get through this course. It's no small feat, it's something you should be proud of, and I know we as the instructional staff are proud of you to be here tonight. This profession is continuous learning and training. Remember, you are only starting your career. What will the fire service look like when you, at my age or you're at the end of it? What will your impact be? You can make a difference every day you go to work. Don't let that opportunity pass you by. Don't be satisfied with the status quo. Always train, educate, reach for more. Thank you, TRFA 146, for your commitment and respect to this training process. Thank you for your commitment to the profession of firefighting, to serving your community, to serving each other, and finally, to serving us, the Virginia Beach Fire Department, because I can now call you tonight, my brother and my sister, in the fire service. These students could not, these new Virginia Beach firefighters could not have accomplished what they have without the love and support of their family. The support of their families is critical. Help from the squad members, the instructional staff. Firefighting is a team effort. You know, the effort is one at home first, and then the station, and then the scene. Today's training is tomorrow's success, and that's truly a cornerstone of our profession. During the past 26 years, I've only been able to succeed with the help of my brothers and sisters at the station, but more importantly, my family members at home. And let me tell you, if you need someone to put you in your place, or you're getting a little too big, if you've got too many stickers on the car, your brothers and sisters at the station, or your, or your wife or your significant other at home would be glad to let you know, right? They'll be able to check you. Thank you to the Fire Chief Cover, please, Deputy Chief McAndrews, certainly Chief Hutchison, Class 29, sir, here we go. All right. Chief Ramsey, thank you for your support. Battalion Chief Jack Crandall, Captain Elmore, the instructional staff, the EMS Div training division staff for your help. With the following individuals, as I call your name, please stand. Battalion Chief Jack Crandall, Captain April Elmore, Master Firefighter, Master Firefighter Sean Hall, Master Firefighter Alex Waslack, Master Firefighter Hope Scott, Captain Scott Bouchane, Master Firefighters Mark Hunley, Master Firefighter Amy Mack, Master Firefighter Matt Pittman, who is now an assigned instructor. He started out the academy as a temporary duty assignment. I would like to thank you guys for your help. I've had a lot of good shifts, but this is probably the best, and I thank you all for that. All right. You're the ones who are in before everyone comes in to set the day, and you leave after everyone else has to clean up and plan for the next. And it means everything to me. It means something to our department, and it certainly means something to our constituents and the, excuse me, and the community at large. We offer your, you offer your help to physically condition recruits, to stay back with extra training, each test and quiz, the preparation, each practical evolution. Thank you, I am humbled and could not be more proud to be in your company. To TRFA 146, the unofficial motto in the instructional staff is teach, coach, mentor. 
That's what we strive for. I hope you have found that to be true in hindsight, maybe not at the time when someone may have been motivating you when your push-ups weren't quite there, or your plank was a little slack, right? But know that we care about you physically and mentally. And as firefighters, we care about you deeply. I'm almost done, I promise. Character is revealed by how we behave when we think no one is looking. But character is strengthened when we act as if everyone is looking. Think about that. John Wooden, UCLA basketball coach, a friend of mine in the fire service, Captain John Rubel kind of turned me on to this. Ability may get you to the top, but it takes character to keep you there. Never forget it. Your character, your strength of character speaks to your reputation. Remain humble, respectful, grateful. Find a job you love, you'll never work another day again. And I can tell you, I hit the lottery 26 years ago, I haven't worked a day since. So I ask you, TRFA 146, have you found what you love to do? Yes, sir. That's what I like to hear. If so, then you will never work another day. It's true. Because what you're doing, when you do what you love, it's not work. Firefighting is noble, it's honorable, and it's a privilege to do every day. Be the best firefighter you can be to serve your community, to serve and watch over each other. Brothers and sisters, remember, Chief Martinette said it, your brothers and sisters may talk about you, but you're my brother and sister now, so if I hear it, I can talk about you, no one else can, right? Remember that. Think about this one last bit. It is amazing how much can be accomplished if no one cares who gets the credit. That's not what it's about, right? That's who we are. So it's time to roll up your sleeves and let's get to work. Thank you, 146, for your hard work. The training division is proud of you. Please continue to grow and improve. Stay healthy, stay safe. And it'd be my honor, certainly when I get out of training to serve with any of you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce TRFA Class 146 President, Jason A. Cassis. Good evening. Chief Cover, senior staff, honorary guests, thank you for being here tonight. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all our families for their unwavering support. The past seven months have been tough with many sleepless nights, numerous family functions that had to be missed. Without the love and support of our families, we would have never been able to get to this point, so thank you. I'd also like to thank Fire Chief Cover for giving us the opportunity to serve the fine citizens of Virginia Beach. This is not something we take lightly. And we truly appreciate it. Also to the training staff, who spent countless hours preparing for lectures, practical evolutions, in order to make sure we received the best training possible. Thank you very much. We came to the academy the first day as individuals, but it didn't take us long to figure out that we needed to come together as a team if we were going to make it through the past the next seven months. We faced many challenges together, from the field crawl, which we all saw and loved so much, then, of course, I can't forget SCBA week, which I think pushed every one of us to our limit and beyond. I know it did for me. But in the end, we pushed each other through. I know standing here today that I can count on each and every one of you to lay it all on the line if my life was in danger, and I would do the exact same thing for you. From day one, Captain Arizari commanded us to be students of this profession. He said if we ever reached a point where we felt we knew everything about this job, that would be the day we needed to hang up our helmet and find another career because complacency is what gets firefighters killed. A firefighter's desire to succeed in this job is never ending. Giving it your all, day in, day out, is what's expected of us. Watch over your brothers and sisters, and they will watch over you long after you've hung up your turnouts for the last time. A firefighter's dedication to his brothers and sisters will stand the test of time. Thank you, that's all I have. I also want to take a quick moment to uh, present a plaque that Class 146 had made for the instructional staff, um, present it to Captain Arizari as soon as we find it. Live TV.
All right, so on behalf of Class 146, we want to thank each and every one of you for your dedication to us and believing in us the entire time. We truly appreciate it. Hopefully you can hang this in the walls of the Training Center proudly. Okay, I'd like to announce a valedictorian for uh, class 146. And to be honest with you, it was tight. It was tight. This, this individual showed strong academics throughout. Only beat the second place finisher by five one hundredths of a point. Very good work. Class, uh, class valedictorian of TRFA 146, Jason M. Clark. Please come up. Mr. Clark, I won't mention the fact that this is like your fourth go round, so you should have been the valedictorian. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Okay. All right, so now we're at to the point where I'd like to uh, announce some of our awards. There are two awards that we give in the Fire Academy, and certainly uh, uh, I'd like to, this first one, Mental Fortitude, Physical Aptitude. Jason, R., Jason Ray Workman Award. Please welcome Captain Craig Brown to present that award. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eyes, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall not grow old as, that, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them or the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Special Warfare Operator Chief, Petty Officer Seal, Jason R. Workman, 32, of Blanding, Utah, died August 6, 2011, Wardak Province, Afghanistan along with 29 American brothers, a father, a husband, a son, a brother, a friend, and a warrior. Jason gave the ultimate sacrifice for his country and his comrades. Jason gave his all in everything he did and everything he accomplished. He believed in what he was doing with all his soul. His commitment was exemplary, his drive remarkable, his prowess and stature legendary. It's about getting off the couch and getting it done, taking that risk and being a part of something bigger than you. If you didn't try, how would you know the difference between failure and accomplishment? you would be standing there empty and safe. To quote Steve Prefontaine, it's on the plaque, to give anything less than the best is to sacrifice the gift. 
This is what this award encompasses. This is what this award means to us. This award will not be given to every recruit academy. This award will wait for the perfect target and zero in. We are proud of each and every one of you. You all have accomplished great things. All have proven worthy, but one is the tip of the spear. For physical aptitude and mental fortitude, the TRFA 146 Workman Award recipient, Nathan T. Diffley. Thank you, Captain Brown. Congratulations, Mr. Diffley. Just so you know, in the video, you can see the hose, the five-inch hose, the large diameter hose that we have. There's three sections bolted together, right? That's 500 pounds, that piece of hose, and that's what they carry around on air. And we go, and we go, and we go. I say we, I say mean you. <laughs> right? And we go until we run out of air. And then, because we are physically fit at that point, we're able to process and we go through an emergency bypass procedure. That is the exercise for the workmen, and that exemplifies the, some of that award. Thank you very much, Captain Brown. At this time, I would like to ask District Chief Vance Cooper to the stage, please, to present a special award this evening, the Whalen Award. Chief Cooper. This um, award is very special for a lot of people um, in this area. It's special for me. Uh, Whalen was a schoolhouse friend of mine. We go back since we were 10 years old. And uh, on February 13th, 2000, the fire department and community mourned the loss of one of its own, Christopher J. Whalen. He, was, he found his calling to the fire service as a TRFA student in August of 1998. And upon graduation, he was assigned as a volunteer to the Virginia Beach Fire Station 8. Chris began his professional career in September of 98, working for the York County Fire Department. Seven months later, he was hired by Norfolk and was assigned to Station 13 in Ocean View. In Chris's all too brief tenure, his love for the job was evident by his unbridled passion for the fire service, and as a result, the Christopher J. Whalen Award was created. The Christopher J. Whalen Award is presented to the student who instinctively demonstrates the characteristics of a true leader. Others turn to this person for guidance, support, and much needed camaraderie. This individual is one that is valued highest among his or her peers and instructors, not only for knowledge, but also for enthusiasm and dedication. Christopher J. Whalen exemplified all of these and more. He will be remembered for his hard work, reliability, endless concern for others, and mostly his charismatic sense of humor. In dedication to our fallen friend, we honor Dustin M. Rice with the Christopher J. Whalen Award.
Okay. Thank you, Chief Cooper. And let me tell you, that was, uh, there, was some, uh, there was some debate. I won't say argument, because we don't argue typically. But there was some debate. There was any number, it could have been 10 or 15 people to get either one of those awards. It's tough. It's tough. But it was, this class has been very special, and we appreciate that. It doesn't mind, we don't mind doing a little bit of work. All right. Let's get to the, pair, uh, the pinning ceremony. Please, I ask that the members, members, the TRFA members and the family members, please come to my left, please to the right when I call you up, all right? And then we'll do the, conduct the pinning ceremony there. So please take a moment. When you get up to the stage, take a moment, posture the pictures, please, just as we rehearsed, right? <laughs> Three or four times, you wouldn't believe it, right? At this time, I would also like to invite Council Member Wood, Fire Chief Cover, Deputy Chiefs Hutchison and McAndrews, and Battalion Chief Jack Crandall, please, to come forward and congratulate. Chief Martinette as well, please, come forward and congratulate our newest members of the Virginia Beach Fire Department. By the chairs. All right, I'm getting ready to see if you can count, 146. Squad one, please stand. Family members, you can meet your loved ones, the ones that are pinning, please. Family affair, it doesn't matter. You can walk right up there with them. <laughs> his, uh, his parents. Okay, from squad one. Adam C. Biddle, who will be pinned by his parents, Larry and Marilyn. Recruit Biddle, or now probationary firefighter Bill, is going to Engine 9C. Right. And Gibble, you wouldn't believe it, but somebody actually asked for you there. I can't believe it myself. Christina R. DeVries. Christina will be pinned by her boyfriend, Ben Harper. Christina is already uh, stationed at Station 8B once we get the picture done. There we go. Matthew T. Hodge. Matthew will be pinned by his father, Michael, brother, Brian, and fiance, Kate. Matthew's will be going to engine 21 B shift. Matthew was one of my favorites. Remind me of Honest Abe, bless his heart. <laughs> and I took stock in Pedialyte because he was a, he was a frequent user. It was good. He's, my portfolio has tripled.
Kevin M. Jeffries, K-Swag. Kevin will be pinned by his parents, Tim and Louise. Kevin, you're going to be going to engine 12, C-Shift. I hope you like boats. Blood doesn't show in the coat. You're okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Squad two, please stand. Mm. Okay. That needs work. If you got trouble with the right and left, remember, hold them up like this. Okay, please, family members, meet your loved one. <laughs> family members, if you need to presage, it's okay, too. Our first recruit, Ryan P. Arab. Ryan will be pinned by his parents, Gems and Dave, Gems, James, excuse me, and Deborah. Recruit Arab or probationary firefighter Arab will go into engine 11 A shift. Recruit Arab also, I think, is the only one that ever got set over seven minutes on the plank. Good work. Robert W. Houston, who will be pinned by Robert will be pinned by his wife Whitney. <laughs> Firefighter Houston is going to be in engine 18 B shift. <laughs> Former MMA fighter, by the way. Take him with you tonight. <laughs> David S. March. David will be pinned by his wife, Brittany, and his father, Paul. Retired battalion chief, as a matter of fact, my battalion chief when I was in battalion one on B shift. David is already stationed at engine 19 A shift. Mitchell E. Riley. Mitchell will be pinned by his sister, Lindsay Jones. Mitch is going to engine seven, sea ship. That's tonight, Mitch. You're late for work. Mitch, can I get your autograph? I saw that bit on front line. Thank you. 
is there. Very proud of you. Squad three, please stand. Family members for squad three, there you go. You get moving there. All right. Calvin E. Cephas. <laughs> Calvin will be pinned by his mother, Deborah. Calvin is going to engine 21A. Or is it DJ Seaface? Which one is it? <laughs> we like those beats. Dustin M. Rice. <laughs> Dustin will be pinned by his wife, Candace. And what's the baby's name? Because the baby is definitely here. <laughs> Dustin will be going to engine nine A shift. Nicholas Stevens. Nicholas will be pinned by his parents, Thomas and Marilyn. Mr. Stevens is going to engine 11 B shift. Or is it Jelly? I think that was your nickname. I don't get, what is that? What's that mean? Nicholas, I know you've made Captain Bouchain very happy. <laughs> Maybe that's peanut butter. I'm not sure. Congratulations. Squad four, please stand. Jeremy A. Asensio. Jeremy will be pinned by his parents, Carlos and Hilda. Jeremy is going to engine 20, B shift. That is the youngster right there, 19, 20.
Brad R. Pugh. Brad will be pinned by his wife, Courtney. Brad is going to engine 18A. Nice work, Pug. John R. Hughes McMahon. Hughes. John would be pinned by his mother, Joanne. John is going to engine eight, A shift. Brian L. Thomas. Brian will be pinned by his sister Stephanie and niece Maddie. Brian is going to engine five B shift. I'm jealous she has more hair. Squad five, please stand. Richard M. Myers. Richard will be pinned by his wife, Nina. Richard is going to engine two C shift. And Richard, let me remind you that you are still outranked at work and at home. It does work that way. How many more can we expect out of the Myers family with these two going? <laughs> One more. Okay. Just for those who don't know, Richard has, this is your fourth time, Richard, applying for the process. It's a tough process to get in, right? He's finally there. Michael B. Ramsey. Whamsey. <laughs> Michael's going to be pinned by his parents, Tammy and Brian, and his sister, Taylor. Michael will be going to engine 21 C-shift.
see you on that next time. Congratulations. Congratulations. Kevin A. Rosenberger. Kevin will be pinned by his wife, Kelly. Kevin will be going to engine four, B shift. Vincent G. Smith III. Vincent will be pinned by his wife Tuesday. Vincent, you are going to engine 14 A shift, as if the big sign up here on the board didn't give you that. Squad six, please stand. Yeah. Did we skip five? Did we skip five? I hope not. Jason M. Clark. Jason is being pinned by his wife, Rosanna, and children, Mackenzie and Gavin. And definitely being upstage by them, too, I've noticed. Jason, also, your shift knows you're going to 18C shift. Your shift knows that your uncle cooks barbecue, so you're done. You're done. You better bring some. Nathan T. Diffley. Nathan is being pinned by his parents, Pat and Lisa, and his sister, Shannon. Also, Jason is, excuse me, Nathan is going to engine two A shift. My old shift.
Crystal D. Jacobs. Crystal is being pinned by her mother, Vinny, sister Kim, and daughters. Crystal is going to engine 20 C shift. Congratulations, Crystal. Break it up. Just a little something on Crystal. Crystal started the academy not being able to do one pull-up. She finished the academy being able to do 16 legitimate pull-ups. Good job, Crystal. Jason A. Cassis. Jason is being pinned by his parents, Max and Sabeel, and daughter, Madison. Jason will be going to engine five C shift. Okay, I would now like to invite Chief Magistrate Thomas R. Cahill to swear in the newest recruits of the Virginia Beach Fire Department. Thank you, Captain. Yes, sir. Good evening. First of all, to the graduates, congratulations and best wishes on the career that's ahead of you. I'm kind of the last step between you and punch and cookies or whatever celebration you have planned for the evening. So I'll keep it moving along. But for those of you that haven't taken the time and all of the excitement leading up to tonight to memorize the oath, it's okay. I'll repeat it for you. You can repeat after me. But I do ask you to think about what you're saying as we go forward. And a couple things you won't hear as part of the oath are to do things close enough or to do the minimum necessary to get by. What you're about to do is make a formal promise here in front of your family, fellow graduates, and fellow firefighters to faithfully and diligently discharge your duties in all that you do because the way you approach those duties is going to make a difference in whether it's a routine day or a very bad day, as Chief Cover says. You'll make that difference. You can turn the difficult into the routine and the really difficult into the manageable. So I invite the graduates to please stand and also, for any other firefighters who may be here in the audience that would like to join in reciting the oath with tonight's graduates, I invite you to do so as well. If you would all please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. 
solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all duties Accumbent upon me as a sworn firefighter with the City of Virginia Beach Fire Department, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, firefighters.